Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And this is our weekly uh, look back at last week's eBay auction results, the regular video we do. And today is uh, September 21st. And uh, before we get started on, on what happened over at eBay this week, a couple of, a couple of footnotes to add in here. Um, as you know, a couple of weeks ago, we began displaying stuff on here from Catawiki, and we had some technical issues to do with, with on their side and things we had to work out. And as I said a couple of weeks ago, we'll figure it out, and we did. And uh, they're very nice to deal with, extremely cooperative with us. And um, we've got them back on here. Their page has been put back and, and redesigned a bit so that it works a bit better. And uh, that's all squared away. The other thing that happened um, this week was that we loaded up the catalogs for Hong Kong. Hong Kong, so we just finished in New York, I know, last week. We haven't been able to get the, the, the price results video yet for everything because we've been busy doing a lot of other things this week. But we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Probably get it out at the beginning of the week. Um, we added all the catalogs. Now, Sotheby's has a lot of sales over there coming up uh, the next week, the first week of October. Um, they've got five or six, seven catalogs on. Christie's so far just has for porcelain and decorative art one, the regular pavilion sale. But one of the two of the auctions that are in here, you really do have to check out. Um, Remember a few years ago, there was the famous auction over in, um, in England, 2010, the Bainbridges had, where they sold this vase, this Chinlung vase. It became very controversial. It sold for about $69 million U.S., didn't get paid for, big kerfuffle, rumors that it wasn't authentic, and all this other crazy stuff. And, of course, at the end, it was brokered and uh, sold privately in Hong Kong by um, uh, Colin Sheaf of Bonhams, helped the family and helped the auctioneer get it sold and paid for. Well, a second vase has popped onto the market that's virtually identical. It is not the same one, and apparently it was originally sold by the Yamanaka Company. Um, those of you that know who Yamanaka was, they were a legendary Asian art dealer um, based out of Japan that was liquidated in the 1940s um, uh, during the war in the United States and basically put out of business. But they were a stupendously famous company. They had shops all over the U.S. And um, this is a vase that uh, apparently provenance is back to there. Um, and if you get into the uh, catalog here, we'll flip it open. Um, here, is the, uh, here is the vase. Okay, and it's virtually identical to the one that was um, sold at Bainbridge's. Uh, there are slight differences in the border, slight differences in some of the decoration. And here's a picture of it here on the left-hand side uh, in an in a, uh, imperial uh, porcelain uh, thing that was done um, in the Yamanaka catalog in 1905, illustration 301. There's the vase. All right has a nice long provenance, there's a lot of excitement about it, and the estimate is fairly reasonable. Uh, the rumor was that the uh, Bainbridge example was sold in, in Hong Kong for about 25 to 30 million. Um, this one is carrying an estimate of uh, uh, under 10 million. So I think that's being done to encourage participation. But take advantage of the catalog because you can come over here and you can pull it in and you can get a really up close and personal with the decoration and see how it is done and get a very strong sense of uh, uh, um, what the decoration would look like if you had the vase in your hand. These are really amazing what Sotheby's is doing these days and uh, well worth looking at. And there's an extensive write-up on the history of the cattle, of the, of the vase, uh, its design origins, its colors, its hist all that. It's a great thing. We'll see how that does. It'll be exciting. And uh, on to this, the Sir Kuo Wei Li collection, okay? Uh, Mr. Li uh, was a, a very famous uh, Hong Kong banker and businessman. He was the chairman of the Hang Seng Bank. He went to work at that bank in 1946, and he passed away, unfortunately, in 2013 at the age of 95. He was one of the founders of the Asia Society in Hong Kong. Um, he was on the advisory board at Sotheby's. He was a good friend of Julian Thompson, who helped found the Asian department in the 70s in, in, in Hong Kong, and uh, just a, an amazing gentleman. But his collection is now coming onto the market, or part of it anyway, and uh, it's an absolutely amazing collection. You have to come and see this collection. It's uh, certainly on a par with the Chow collection and any of those that sold years ago. Um, massive Wan Lee, Yong Lo plates, um, look at, look, you know, grapes pattern plates, just on and on and on great stuff fabulous jades uh, a lot of ming material a lot of imperial material uh, but just absolutely top quality this guy was a true connoisseur he had uh, obviously the wherewithal to pursue a hobby and he did in spades he also was very generous he gave away a lot to the community 
and did a great deal to build relations between uh, 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 China and um, Asia in general and the West and, 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 and to teach Westerners about China itself. All right, so check it out. It's a, it's a great catalog. We'll do a video on it. And uh, on to the eBay auction results last week. There was this. This was a nice little, uh, uh, you know, a covered uh, rice bowl, food bowl, uh, done in under, uh, gilded over, but uh, done in sort of dowsi and a touch of famille rose enamels, um, you know, the citron fingers and so forth. It was marked on the bottom, has sort of a, a very uh, primitive uh, Chin Lung mark on the bottom. I don't think it was Chin Lung, I think it was early 19th century. And it did pretty well. It brought $556. A lot of stuff on eBay did very well last week, too. Um, I'm going to look at some, we're going to look at a number of them. And then you had these, this very nice pair of hat stands. Uh, they had Chin Lung marks. They weren't Chin Lung, though. But they were beautifully done with figures, calligraphy, and everybody that's been watching these for a while knows that when you have these these individual figures and, and, and calligraphy panels on them, the the price tends to be quite strong. And uh, this pair brought two hundred and twenty-five dollars. And uh, when you have things like this cup, um, you even get stronger prices for its size because so many of these little cups that are done in the same style as that pair of hat stands. Uh, have hairlines in them. They crack and get hairlines very easily. And it's because of the shape of the cup, the way it flares out, it causes a lot of stress in the porcelain and they crack very easily in this way. All right, straight rim bowls don't, and cups don't crack as easily, but the ones when they're slightly flared out and of this size, um, they, they tend to be a bit tender. And uh, this one did very well. It brought $931. It was about two and a half, three inches tall, but a very pretty little cup, okay? And then on to this. This was a fabulous little buy for someone. If you collect armorial stuff, this, this went for about $550. It was a very nice 18th century, circa 1770, armorial uh, 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 teapot. It had a slight hairline in the handle, but that's about all there was to it. And that wasn't a big deal because it looked like it's stable. And, but the decoration on this was terrific. And uh, it, didn't, it didn't bring the world. It brought $556. It was sold by Arthur Potts over in Dorset. All right, it's a nice little pot. All right, and then on to this. This is one of the big items of the week. Was this very interesting uh, pak tong um, uh, 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 ink box, ink cake box, and uh, with it, there's a whole uh, uh, a bit of information on the seal and who did it and so forth. And it was up to ten or thirteen. Well, it was very. It was it wasn't at all anywhere when we first saw it, and then it was at thirteen thousand. I think by the time we posted the newsletter, it went up very rapidly. And uh, last week, it ended up closing for $30,823. All right. This is quite a, quite a little box. A dealer over in, uh, in uh, uh, Sussex in the U.K. had it. All right. I think he was probably pretty surprised. All right. Maybe not. And uh, then on to this. There were a couple of decent little Qing Dynasty bronzes on here last week. If you like bronzes, I hope you noticed these. I hope you maybe bought one of them. These were nice. And uh, you have this one with the, uh, with, the, with the falcon or eagle's head uh, side handles and these Buddhist swags on here. Very nicely done. Uh, very good quality. Here's a side view of it. Here's a picture of the bottom, okay? Um, I'm not sure what all that gunk in there is. It looks like maybe somebody put a lead bottom on it at some point. But the, pores, the, the bronze itself was beautifully done. I liked the surface on it. And uh, it didn't go for a huge amount of money. $310. That isn't bad for one of those. This was about nine inches tall, as I recall. All right. And uh, this was Orlando Shores had it. They also had, they got into it. They must have gotten into a collection of uh, Qing uh, uh, Buddhist influence bronzes because they also had this very nice little uh, offering uh, uh, vase or jadao perhaps and uh, but again very similar in age similar in style here's a picture of the bottom here's a uh, two character mark on the base and this was a nice little piece here it is lots of good legitimate age to it I suspect it was probably 18th or early 19th century and uh, it brought just two hundred and three dollars all right as I say a million times, leave a bid. If you see something you like, leave a bid. All right, that was a real good buy. That was a great buy, actually, the more I think about it. All right, leave a bid. Don't put it on a watch list and wonder what's going to happen and think about it. Just leave a bid on it, and there you're in, and then you can keep track of it easier, okay? And now on to this, this very nice jade. This was a seller here in uh, uh, Massachusetts had this down on the South Shore who handles a lot of good estates. And uh, they had this. This was a very nice uh, 18th or early 19th century carved jade. It was vase. It was missing its lid, unfortunately. But it had its original ring handles and just uh, beautifully carved. Very good quality carving on this. 
Um, so you can switch this one up. There we go. All right. Very well carved. Good detail. And um, it went for ten thousand six hundred and twelve dollars, which was uh, I think a perfectly good price for that. I think if it had the lid, it would have probably doubled that. And they had another jade up as well, and we'll get to that in a minute. All right, and then someone had these up, two very nice white jade archer rings that had been retrofitted into sterling silver um, salt and peppers. All right, uh, this was sort of a common practice back in the 1920s. Um, there, was, there was a great uh, fascination with all things to do with Asian culture, and uh, there were a number of companies, as I've said before in other videos, that would take uh, Asian bits and turn them into other objects for around the house, inkwells and salt and pepper shakers. These were very nice, very good quality jade. This is what sold them. They brought $2,722, okay? And uh, they were sold by a seller we've not seen before, who I think does general house sales. They're in Ohio. Two Dogs is the name of the seller. Okay. And here is the other jade that the uh, seller here in Massachusetts had. This was a, a, a beautiful jade uh, uh, with a phoenix uh, carrying a, a vase. Uh, very fine quality. It had its lid, um, but uh, just really good work. Nice, again, probably 18th, early 19th century, uh, nice color, and it brought $20,200, all right? And it also had a beautiful stand on it. I don't know if you can see the stand, but the stand was of exceptional quality. Nice old stand that was made to go with it, all right? And uh, $20,200, all right? And then on to these. A very pretty pair of Chin Lung blue and white uh, dishes with, with shaped rims. And uh, you see these dishes with shaped rims fairly often, but these are really shaped. These have sort of almost exaggerated um, uh, uh, waves on the rims. And the uh, central panel is a fairly stock panel in the center with the two figures on the little foot stone bridge going across the water. But beautifully done, nice quality. Uh, these were about 9 or 10 inches in diameter. There's the back. And these went, I think, very reasonably, $430 for the pair, okay? That's not a bad price for these. That, that, those are top quality porcelains, probably done uh, 1770 or so, okay? And then on to this, a very nice little uh, 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 Chinese uh, uh, watercolor. If you like watercolors, this seller had up a couple of them. And uh, you could, you know, $400, $410, not bad. All right, uh, Chinese paintings uh, and, and Japanese paintings these days of this period, uh, late 19th century, tend to be very reasonable. All right, still, unless it's done by some, obviously, by some phenomenally famous artist. All right, you, so if you're tired of hanging plates on your walls, buy some Chinese watercolors and Chinese paintings. You'll enjoy them, okay? And it'll help you understand the artwork on porcelain a bit, too, which is always nice. All right, and then there was this iron red export vase. This wasn't a terribly big vase. They, they took it, the picture in a way that makes it look huge, but it was actually about 10 inches tall. But very nice quality, uh, second, early second half of the 19th century, uh, judging by the decoration on it. And uh, I like this. This was a pretty little vase. And it went modestly, $284. Perfectly good, genuine piece of early Chinese porcelain um, uh, at a very reasonable price. All right, there's still good buys on here. All right, and then there was this. This is a late 19th, early 20th century uh, Femi Ver jar done sort of in the Kangxi style. It was probably done between 1900 and 1920 as a guess, but good quality, okay? Um, here's a, a close-up of it, and uh, where's the bottom of it? Here's the bottom of the pot, all right? It's got a, the, the, the four-character Kangxi mark on it, which was very commonly used uh, during the early 20th century on porcelain. And, uh, oh, it hasn't closed yet. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have had that. that. We'll put that in at the end, okay? It's up to, we'll just swing over here just quickly. It's up to $337 and uh, closes on Sunday. So check it out. All righty. Now let's get back to where we were. Sorry about the confusion. I get confused sometimes. All right, it was this. This was a nice little early 19th century uh, uh, tray with pine tree and ascending heron. And you have these sort of uh, 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 fungus-looking uh, rue heads growing up uh, foundation, uh, out of the ground. And then the turtles. Okay, I love the turtles on the rock. Very nice little scene. Here's a picture of the, of the back of the, uh, of the tray, all right? This, uh, it, they claim that it's a, a, a Jai Jing uh, mark, 
I'm not so sure it's Jai Jing, but it's pretty close to it. All right. And um, well, it could be Jai Jing. Yeah, early, yeah, 1815, 1820, somewhere around there. It did well, at any rate. It brought $1,009. All right. Um, but this was a nice tray, very artistically drawn and in good condition. All right. Uh, all too often, these trays have chips out of the corners and hairlines. The, this one has feet. The feet often are damaged uh, because trays tend to get used. All right, this one uh, was well cared for, so it, it did just fine, all right? So take care of your antiques. And here's a nice little candy. This was a, a good late Ming uh, uh, candy. Um, it did have a s old repair up here at the top uh, and so forth, but perfectly nice one, all right? Candies often have old repairs on them. And um, this one went for $780. Gunnar Jacobson had this over in Sweden. Uh, he gets good things. He has a good eye. And uh, perfectly good price. Without that repair, it probably would have brought another 400 All right, and then on to these. A very elegant, almost European-looking, almost like, like French porcelain or German or Austrian porcelain, a uh, pair of armorial uh, uh, export dishes of the 18th century. And these were lovely, and the gilding on them looked to be in quite good condition. Often the gilding, is, as you all know, it, it wears off. It's not fired at the same high temperature as uh, enamels, and it tends to be very sensitive to cleaning and abrasion and so forth. But this one, the gilding uh, looked very good. You can still see the iron red um, uh, decorations through the gilt in places, which is something you, you want to look for. And uh, these did pretty well. They brought $609. But that's not the world for these, because these are extremely pretty and rather unusual in their decoration and their decorative style. Very Western. All right. And then on to this. I think this was one of the dandy buys of the week. This was a bargain. Um, this was a very nice, big, white uh, uh, vase with lion mask or fu, fu mask on, on the side. There it is. And uh, this vase was big. I forget how big it was, like 20 inches tall or something. Uh, where's the dimensions? It's hard. To, they don't always have the dimensions readily real. 23 inches tall. And the, the, this vase only went for $440, okay? Now, the shipping might be, have been a little high. It was coming from Italy, so it's 100 bucks. But I, I know from shipping internationally, that's a, that's a pretty reasonable price. That isn't terrible. All right, so that was a good buy for someone. And then there was this nice uh, mid-19th century uh, 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 shaped uh, export lacquer box. Uh, it did have some wear to it, but it still had its original pewter tea caddy liners, um, which, was, which is nice. There's a better shot of them. And they're all incised on top. Usually the sides of these are left plain um, because they're not that visible unless you pull them out. But the tops were nicely decorated. And overall, this was in good condition, but not great condition but a good, genuine, early uh, uh, a box, and it uh, went for $459, okay? Uh, not bad. All right, and on to this. This was a, a, a really nice little uh, late 18th, early 19th century uh, uh, brush washer. Here's a shot of it, and I like a good flambe glaze on this. The glaze on this was really nice. Here's a picture of the bottom, nice smooth foot on it. Um, some some uh, crackling here and there, but this was the real deal. This was a nice old one and uh, very pretty, and uh, it did fine. It brought $1,025, okay? This came from a, a seller, Isabella. She's a new seller out in California, in, Vaje in Vallejo, California, all right? And then on to these, there was a three-panel section of uh, Kesey's, okay? Um, unfortunately for the seller, they overlit this, it looks like to me, when they, they may have used a flash or something, which if you're shooting Kesey panels, you know you need to use side light so you don't flash down the colors too much, all right? But at any rate, uh, here's a close-up of it. Very good quality uh, Kesey panels, okay? Nice gilding, good facial expressions, lots of detail, uh, lots of sense of activity on them. Here it is, okay, and then they've been remounted and these other things, uh, which I don't care about. But anyway, these did well. They brought $2,550, okay. Stein Pierre Stone had these over in, in Hessen in Germany, and uh, he, he, he gets good things, he's a good seller, and they were very attractive. Nice-looking set of panels. And speaking of panels, was this. This, this was, if, if you don't have an endless wallet to buy Chinese antiques and you like unusual and undervalued things, I've always thought these wood-carved panels are way undervalued. And this is a, there were two of these up. I don't know why he split them up. He should have sold them as a pair, I think. But beautifully done, reticulated, mid-19th century wood panels. Um, here you have a, a farmer walking along a road carrying a, a tool and a young lady with him. And, uh, but excellent quality, nice wood, nice color in the 
the wood. Um, very good detail. Uh, the mountains, the Chinese mountains styled in the background. And um, 67 bucks. How can you beat that? That's a great little buy. I think the other one went for about the same price. So you could have had two good things. They, uh, Dead Guy Stuff in San Diego had those up. A nice fellow out there. And then on to this, this very unusual Kung Shi teapot. A double spouted teapot um, in Utsai enamels. And it's got the uh, that uh, you know that well-known uh, yellow with black, uh, the bam faux bamboo porcelain decorated uh, handle on top. And uh, this was a really interesting little pot. It had these little sort of bridge work arms supporting the handle on top here. All right, there it is. Had some minor damage. This thing wasn't perfect. But it, I thought it was such an interesting example. It had an old repair and all that good stuff. Still went for $1,351. This is, a, a, as I mentioned last week, this is a very rare style. Uh, you don't see double spouted ones compressed with that handle uh, hardly ever. Um, so this was a great buy. I think if it had been perfect and better condition, it probably would have brought six to $8,000 uh, somewhere around there. It was quite a, quite a nice pot, okay? And then onto this, this was that that dragon textile I loved last week. I thought this was just beautiful, um, nicely done on gold silk ground, uh, some metallic uh, threads, and uh, it brought fifteen hundred and eighty dollars, which is fine. All right, and uh, oh, I hear fire trucks coming, so it may get loud here in a minute. Sorry. All right, now on to things that are closing um, next week, uh, coming up on Wednesday. Is this? It's a pretty nice robe. Unfortunately, whoever can, whoever put this up had a real hard time focusing their camera. This is a nice um, uh, uh, early 20th century, sort of a winter robe with, with dragons on it and waves and so forth. Um, uh, it's Unfortunately, it's sort of badly out of focus, but this is a perfectly good little robe, all right? Probably done in the, you know, 1915, 1920, very nice. And uh, it doesn't have any bids yet. It's, the opening bid is 1,200 bucks. I don't think that's bad for that, okay? And then on to... This, another KC panel came up. This is another nice older one, mid-19th century from what I can see, but good colors, uh, nicely done. And it won't bring two or 3,000 like the, one, the set we just looked at, but a perfectly nice uh, bit of KC work. And uh, it's got two bids right now. It's got five days to go. It closes Thursday. All these things will be in the newsletter. All right. And then on to this is the uh, that nice big late 19th early 20th century jardinere good size one. this would be wonderful to put plants in i always say that i know but, but I, I really think you should it's got it does have a line in the bottom doesn't mean you can't put plants in it all right and um it's got eight bids it's up to 25 bucks and closes in eight days all righty and uh then there's this this was a, a very pretty plate the seller had this up originally as chinese and as you know, this isn't Chinese, it's Japanese, but very nicely done. Beautiful piece of early Arita, um, and it's got spur marks on the, on the feet and all that. But this is a 15-inch plate. This will be in the Buy It Now section on the newsletter this week. And I think he takes offers, um, and I suspect it will, uh, uh, let's see here. What is this? eBay's always doing crazy new stuff. At any rate, I think he takes that, making offers on there. So, um... Uh, if you like if you like big Japanese Arita chargers, early ones, uh, this is a nice one and it appears to be in great shape. So you might want to check that out. All right, and here's this uh, this uh, uh, very nice sort of a yin yin goo form vase, uh, roughly based on the old bronze vases, and uh, uh, it has uh, uh, I think a couple of it's got a little repair and so forth. It closes on Sunday, but it's only up to ninety bucks. A perfectly nice example if uh, you, you you're not always able to buy perfect pieces. All right, and then there's this big, uh, this is a big charger, duck pattern, uh, uh, duck plate. It's uh, 38 centimeters, nice big one. It has a hairline. They, these big plates seem always to have hairlines, but at any rate, it's beautifully painted. It's a nice looking example. It's up to 120 bucks. If it goes for that, you've stolen it. All right, so go by and leave a bid on it. And here's, here's that jar. Uh, um, it closes in a, in a couple of days Sunday. It's an early 20th century jar. Um, I don't agree with the seller. This is a 19th century one. I think this is probably early 20th century, but it's perfectly good, nice form, and uh, has uh, uh, another couple of days to go. Okay, and just as a heads up, uh, uh, Juice 1499 Josh Chamberlain has a 250 plus lot auction starting today, Friday, the 21st of September. 
it's a 10 day sale. It'll end a week from this coming Monday. Um, and uh, he told me he's got some terrific things. So you want to check it out. He, he, he's pretty happy with this auction he's put together. And uh, one of them is this really beautiful robe uh, with, with, with the roundels on it. Okay. So you want to check that out. It'll be linked in the newsletter, and we'll put some boxes up for it, showing, showcasing this stuff once it goes live. Uh, we'll try to do it tomorrow or something. All right, but there's a link on it up in the uh, featured section for his sale. Okay? And that's about it. A um, lot of stuff going on, and we'll, we'll get to work on the auction results of Sotheby's. And if you haven't subscribed yet here, please do join us. Leave a comment. Please give us a thumbs up if you can. Uh, they, they do help us. We like getting new subscribers all the time. And come over to bitamount.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter. Check it out. There's a growing amount of stuff in there every week that we pick to put in. Um, as you know, we hand pick all that stuff, so it takes a little bit of time. But we've, we've got it figured out pretty well. All right. So have a wonderful weekend, and I uh, hope you find out there, uh, find something out there that you love and you're happy with, and uh, um, maybe enjoy a little bit of the fall weather that seems to be upon us. Okay, have a wonderful time, and uh, we'll see you all next week. All right, bye bye. <laughs>